Welcome back. Canadian NBA star Dylan Brooks has a very un-Canadian reputation. He's been called the most hated man in basketball. The small forward from Mississauga seems to enjoy his reputation as a villain, a pest, and an agitator. But how well do NBA fans know the real Dylan Brooks? Rick Westhead travels to Brooks' new home in Houston to find out. It's the Houston Rockets home opener, and Dylan Brooks is tasked with guarding the greatest shooter of all time. Tell you what, Dylan Brooks has a lot of good defense tonight. In the fourth quarter, Brooks is getting under Steph Curry's skin. He's once again intentionally poking the bear. Nah, after that, like I want to poke the bear. I want to see what this person's all about. Another three is down! I like that. I like to get your best out of you, you know, every single game. Curry, step back again. Another one! Three straight threes! This is screens to get Brooks off of him. Oh, he crossed him over. Let Brooks fly by. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Steph Curry! He, he, he did him dirty. Dylan's got it in him to, like, they hit a shot. He's immediately on to the next play. They have to do it again. Well, Dylan Brooks is still on him. They hit another one. They have to do it again. We don't know. Finally. <laughs> and his approach never really changes. When I play, you know, it's either you're going to fold or you're going to rise over the occasion. And usually they fold. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Stay up there, Dylan. Brooks learned about tenacity early in life while growing up in Mississauga. It was his mother, Diane, whose tough love forged Dylan's commitment to basketball. He was playing in Hamilton. So at the time, we lived in Oakville. This was in the winter, and we were driving. It was a snowstorm. And Dylan was kind of sitting in the car going, Mom, I don't know if I want to go to basketball and all this. And here I was, like, like knuckling it on the wheel driving there. She just stopped the car on the side of the road and was like, if you don't go to practice now, I won't ever take you again. Dylan Brooks. You know, ever since then, I wanted to like, never quit on the game. And then I think back then, it just kind of hit him, like thinking, yeah, I think I do want to do this. He just had a real joy when he was playing, and. And I just thought, wow, this kid loves the game. He, I, he's, he's somebody I want to coach. He was just a nice kid. He had a big smile. All the teachers and staff loved him. He has like this fire, this spark. When he's on the floor, you can see like the whole dynamics change. And then half the time you're wondering, okay, what's gonna happen next? that unpredictability became a calling card, as Brooks was a star for the Oregon Ducks. Brooks, desperation, got it! And eventually made it to the NBA after being taken in the second round of the 2017 draft by the Memphis Grizzlies. A place where Brooks personified the grit and grind. He wants the challenge. He wants all the smoke. It's hard work to do what he does. Guarding the best offensive player on a nightly basis, like, that's tough physically, but it's also tough emotionally and mentally. And a technical foul. He's going to be suspended the next game. I just got the motivation that a lot of people don't have. If there's a competition, he wants a part of it. I want to do things that a lot of people don't want to do. It just fits the DNA of this franchise, doesn't he? That grit and grind. That's who he is. He, he's the dog in the game. Dylan Brooks stepping right in to take that charge. You cannot guard the best offensive player on the other team if you're Mr. Nice Guy. You're hearing the booze every time he touches the basketball. Brooks now is public enemy number one here. You remember if there was a point in your life when you're like being a villain or whatever, I'm gonna embrace this. Somebody called me like Dylan the villain and then I just started rolling with it. Hold on, hold on, hold on! Dylan 
Brooks talking some trash. Yeah. Boy, it didn't take long. Now he's if you ever wonder why the Memphis Grizzlies is not ready to compete for a championship, look no further than this idiot right here. I don't think Dylan's a guy who's going to shy away from things. And a cat like Dylan Brooks does not care about your rings. You know, if people say they want to make him the bad guy, he's like, I'm going to be the guy who's in your face the whole game and competes the whole game. If that makes me the bad guy, you know, fine. Durant and Brooks just called for a double technical. Dylan, even though you see him on the court, he seems very out there, vocal. Off the court, Dylan's not really that person. He is very quiet, more reserved. Uh, he really is a likable young man, and he always was likable. We appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you. But the NBA is a dogfight. Technical foul on Booker. Dylan Brooks seems like a regular guy who's trying to dig you. Brooks chose to make enemies along his journey. But perhaps the most perplexing was his feud with LeBron James during last season's playoffs. Maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess, what, what were you thinking? I don't care, he's old. <laughs> I pulled bears. A decision that clearly backfired. Slapped up by James, oh! He rose up! Do you ever have any regrets about the stuff that you'll say or do? Like No. I don't take anything I said back. I would just say what's on my mind. I wouldn't, like, you know, sugarcoat anything or say anything different. It's just what was on my mind then and what's ultimately true. The Lakers would eliminate the Grizzlies in six games. The Los Angeles Lakers will advance by virtue of a 125-85 win. And with Brooks heading to free agency, a report surfaced stating the Grizzlies wouldn't bring him back under any circumstances. Well, the GM told me it was supposed to be, you know, kept between me and him. Not even one day passed. If they didn't want to sign him, so what? Don't sign him. But you don't have to put it out there like he's some off-the-court distractions because he was none of that. You know, I was just a scapegoat for what was, you know, really going on around in Memphis. And, you know, I feel like I was that for, you know, that whole year. And I just... As any Canadian would know, just hugged it. There's other issues besides Dylan Brooks and him poking a bear. If you ask Dylan Brooks' teammates, they ride with him. They ride with him. I saw all the, the memes on Twitter and IG about him needing to learn Mandarin because he was going to go play in China. Just signed for 80 million. Sorry for the language. I didn't really care about the antics, you know, like they're, they're a thing, you're aware that they exist. But for us, it was really, who is the player? And I think he's a guy who day in, day out, competes at a super high level. Brooks cooking right now. For sure, the person that the public perceives is not the person that I'm interacting with every day. Brooks to the rack, <laughs> coming with some nasty. Securing a four-year, $80 million contract with Houston, Brooks now has generational wealth. <laughs> He's matured into a leader at the arena and at his new Houston home, where he lives with his younger brother, Jax. They're pretty close. Dylan's trying to help Jax to get his career going as well. I've been by the edge, feeling cold as December. Hopping not the flight, feel like home. I'm heading with music, you know, like music's my everything. And I work on it every day, countless hours. I try to put a lot of time into it. Got me chasing bands, so we got to pack out. Tell her keep it cool when you come to my house. What world does Dylan play in that? 100% supportive. He helps me out with a lot of things. He's a big fan with my music. Like, I always send him songs all the time. He literally made me feel like I can do anything. What do people misunderstand most about you? I think I am one of the most misunderstood player in the NBA. Now, ultimately, I'm just a competitor. That's my persona that I get into. And ultimately, I'm just a nice guy. I hope that plays this game to support their family and their friends. That notion of family, I think, is very rooted in, in, in Dylan's upbringing. We support each other at all times. Hold each other accountable, but we support each other. And that's exactly what uh, Diana did with Dylan. And actually, when I start to think about that, I start feeling teary. He's not this evil villain. 
deep down inside, that's, that's not who he is. He's a very soft, loving, caring son. <laughs> So far in 2024, Dylan Brooks leads the NBA in personal fouls, averaging almost four every game. It was called the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children, operating from the 1920s to the 1980s. In 2012, W5 investigated horrific claims of abuse. Did Tony ever come back from the hospital? He died. He died. He died. And you were told to shut your mouth? Yes. He still haunts you? He doesn't haunt me. It's those people in the home, the way that they try to cover this up. When you stood over his grave? I, 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 I've always been tough. I've always been not showing my emotions, but uh, it was uncontrollable. And I, I said to him that I'm keeping my promise. You will not be forgotten. Your promise is what? I said that I'm going to let it be known what happened to him, that he did nothing vain. I love you. <laughs> you can watch that full documentary as well as all of our new investigations on W5's official YouTube channel. I'm Avery Haynes. On behalf of everyone here at W5, thanks for watching.